Mobile mining is the easiest way to set up automated income in a game of Lit Cube's Universe, or Star Wars LU in this case. It involves mining ships manually mining asteroids rather than a station mine on a big asteroid that just produces ore or silicon. The station mines are useful when setting up complexes or when you need large amounts of ore and silicon, but the mobile mining from ships allows you to get minerals and crystals which sell for a very high amount, so that's why it's good to do. So all you need to start is a few million credits, as you can see here. Uh, I have about 5 million credits from various missions and selling scrap. Very early game, it's time to buy the first mining ship. So all Star Wars factions should have mining ships for sale. Um, for this uh, example, I'm going to be shopping at the New Republic, so let's see what they have. Any mining ship is a ship that has the word miner at the end, so this E-Wing miner, that will work. We have quad jumper miners over here, and... We also have Y8 miners. So there are two types of miners. There are fighter miners and there are transport miners. Transport miners are TS classes and they usually have a pretty decent cargo bay and they are very, very slow. Fighter miners are also very slow. So 35 meters a second at max speed, just 46 for the E-Wing. Very slow indeed. Um, the quad jumper actually is unique in that it is the fastest mining ship. However, it is it does have a pretty pitiful cargo bay. For this example, I'm going to be using a quad jumper miner. It doesn't really matter what you pick, but if you're going to be using these without a station, I recommend you using um, freighters because they can just sit in mine and fill up over a long period of time. And if you are using a home base, which I'll get to later, you'll want to use fighters. So to start out with, let's use freighters or if we can't afford them, a quad jumper in this case. So as you can see here, I've made it so that all mining ships come with everything they need to do the mining command pre-built in. Now we could give them jump drives and other upgrades, but those require energy cells and those are very, um, they take cargo space. We want the miner, at least, um, you know, in all cases, we want miners to have as much cargo space available as they can for mining. So let's upgrade the cargo bay. Might as well upgrade the engine as well, because we're going to have to take it to a different sector. And it already has everything it needs. Um, like I said, we could put jump drives or something else on it, but uh, we don't want to have fuel in the cargo bay taking up valuable space. So the only thing it needs now are the mining lasers. And they are called mobile drilling systems. So first thing you need to do is check how much your uh, how many lasers your ship can use. So find your ship, uh, I'm using the landed ship menu here, but you can also bring up the player property menu. Go to info, down here, mobile drilling system. This one can use six. So this quad jumper is going to need six mobile drilling systems. I actually don't think I can afford that right now because each mobile drilling system is about half a million credits, so 400,000. So let's buy as many as I can. So four, we'll buy four for now. Once we make some more money, we can come back and fully upgrade the quad jumper. So if we uh, look at its G menu like this, you'll see that it doesn't have all of them installed. So we'll use this to start. All you need is really one laser to start. They just make the ships mine faster. So to start mining, you're going to need asteroids. And as you can see in this sector, asteroids will show up at the bottom of the list on the right. There are no asteroids in this sector. So we need to find another sector that has asteroids. So this sector right here, all of these ones down here, the small ones, are exactly what we need. The big asteroids that show up on the map, they can't be mined by ships, they can only be mined by stations, but um, all these small asteroids will do nicely. So we will go north to Lucky Planets and start this mine. And I just told the miner to follow me, and here it comes. I will update back when we get in position. So we've just exited hyperspace. You can already see the asteroids in the background. Our quad jumper is right behind us. Here it comes. And we just need to go to the asteroids. We actually don't have to supervise it. We can do everything remotely from the menu. But um, because this is the first miner, I'm going to just be demonstrating it live. So we'll have it follow us down to the asteroids. Now, it doesn't actually matter where the ship is in the sector when you start the mining command. It will always just go mine the nearest asteroid to its current lone, known position. So let's go ahead and issue it the command now. It's currently following us. So in the miner, you need to go to special 
and mine, and then it asks, it's asking me which sector it wants to mine in. We're going to pick Lucky Planets, and it is mining. So it, it is going to retarget to the nearest asteroid. Looks like it has its uh, sights on one. And you'll see, I'm well, not quite yet, but the command does rename the ship to Miner, and it sets the name to Blue. That way you can easily keep track of the hundreds of miners you have working for. All right, so it's trying to get it to an asteroid. It's having issues due to collision avoidance. This dense asteroid field is causing the autopilot some problems. So something you can do to alleviate this is simply leave the sector. So I'm going to go to the New Republic sector. And the reason for this is because he's targeted an asteroid that's behind another asteroid, and the autopilot has to navigate around the closer one to get back there, and that's causing issues. But by leaving the sector, we can make it so he just goes from point A to point B because X3 does not calculate pathfinding, collision avoidance, or anything for sectors that the player is not in. So now that I'm not in Lucky Planets, he's just a point on the map that is going to go from point A to point B. And I think he's already started mining, so we're going to go ahead and jump back. All right, so we've re-entered the system after letting the miner uh, get situated. As you can see from the flashing rock over there, he is already mining. So this is what happens when they mine. They just shoot their little mining lasers at the asteroids, and if we check its freight, it hasn't gotten anything yet, but as you can see, it just got a purple mineral. It will be filling up, there we got silicon, and it'll just be mining a whole bunch of stuff until its cargo bay fills up. Now, this is the first, um, this is the most basic way you can set up a miner. As it stands, it will destroy this asteroid, and then it will move on to the next asteroid, and it will just keep mining until its cargo bay is full. And once its cargo bay is full, once its freight is full, it will just stop mining, and it won't, it won't notify you or anything. It'll just stop. The command will end. And you'll see in the um, property menu, it currently says mine mining. It'll say none. And that's something that's quite annoying because it's easy to forget about. But for your first miner, when you don't have a lot of space stations and infrastructure, this is totally fine. You just need to keep an eye on the cargo. So you can always uh, eject stuff into space like this, and it will put them into boxes. And then you can fly your ship, let's see, where am I, into those boxes to pick up the cargo. And then you can go sell it somewhere. Go ahead and pick these up. And if I check my freight, I have this purple mineral. And if we click info on anywhere, it'll tell us what it's worth. So this mineral right here will sell for about 100,000 credits, which is not bad. I mean, that's a very good thing to sell. We just need to find somewhere that sells it. You'll either want a NMMC mining outpost, a USC mining outpost, or a Plutarch mining outpost. I'm not going to go over where those are, but you, uh, that is where you need to go to sell these crystals. They also buy ore and silicon, but you can get better prices for them at factories. So for example, any factory here that is low on ore or silicon will be buying them for more. So like this factory is paying 205 for ore, which is very high. It's also paying a very high price for silicon. So that would be the most optimal thing to do. So while your miner's mining away, you can have your ship go around and mine. Another thing you can do is there's an upgrade called the um, transporter device. When you have the transporter device, you'll see, oh, not that, you'll see an option for freight exchange. It's grayed out now because I don't have it, but it lets you just transfer cargo between the two ships without having to j uh, dump the boxes in space. So that saves, um, a lot of time. It also works within a five kilometer range. So another thing you can do is instead of having to come pick it up yourself, you can be doing something else in the galaxy. You can have your own freighter ship that is, that's not the one you're flying. So this YT2400 I have, I could have it flying autonomously and I could tell it to come here and freight exchange with the quad jumper to uh, up unload the freight. And I could do that even when I'm not in the same sector as long as it has the transporter device. And then I could tell it to go at, to the Plutarch mining outpost and sell it. So you don't have to do this manually, but because I just started the game, I don't really have any other ships other than this A-Wing, which I'm not going to fly. But that is basically how you're going to start. 
just let them grow and keep mining. Now you don't have to sit here. Um, obviously you want to be going around doing other things in the galaxy. Um, every now and then, if you find them full and you don't have a freighter available or you don't have one and you don't want to make the trip, you can just open the freight and you'll notice the volume here. The volume is how many uh, units of cargo bay that each unit of freight takes up. So silicon is quite big and bulky. It takes up a lot of cargo. Same with ore. Ore and silicon and ice for that matter do not sell for a lot. They are the least valuable things a miner can mine. The crystals and minerals are worth a lot more. So something I recommend doing when starting out like this is simply ejecting, um, you know, let the miner fill up quite a bit. You can see it's frayed right here. But just eject all of your silicon and ore into space and just discard it. Some NPC scavenger will come pick it up or maybe you can come pick it up later. But that way the miner can keep mining for the actual valuable things while you can just keep discarding the trash. And that's the basic mining setup. Um, you can easily use the money for mining to finish upgrading the ship. Like I said, it still needs two more mining lasers to have its full potential. We can then buy even more mining ships. There's no limit to how many mining ships you can have in a sector. You can have, you know, 20, 30, 50, 100 mining ships in the same sector. You can have as many as you want. It's just exponential growth with um, income. So that's a very easy way to get started, a mining ship like this. So I've covered the most basic possible setup, but the problem with this is obviously the ships, you have to constantly be managing them. You have to go get the freight. You have to make sure their cargo doesn't fill up. You have to make sure they keep mining. And that's something you constantly have to worry about, which can be problematic. So the next step in the evolution of your mining fleet is a home base. And that can mean a station. It can mean a ship. It can mean a capital ship. It can mean anything that the ships can dock at that is your property. So for this example, I have a Gozanti Vanguard. It is a light carrier TM class. And as you can see, docked to the bottom of it, I have four TIE Fighter Miners. And these are super cheap miners you can buy from the Empire. They're just TIE Fighters that can use mining lasers. They're pretty bad compared to the Quad Jumper over there, though. They have very small cargo. They can't really... Um, if you were using these as lone miners, it would be quite infuriating because you'd have to come empty the cargo every five seconds. But the Gozanti has a lot of cargo can carry 7,000 units, which is a pretty good amount of cargo. So we can have the ships automatically drop stuff off at the Gozanti. So to do that, we need to home base them all at the Gozanti. So if we open the command console of one of our TIE fighters, you can see its home base is blank. So if we click that, we can just set it to the Gozanti Vanguard. So home base, Gozanti Vanguard. And we can quickly do that by clicking on the Gazanti, clicking L, I mean typing L, command console landed ships, home base, and the Gazanti. So now all the ships that are landed at it have been set. So if we check individually, they all have the home base setting. So we can just tell them, give them all the mine commands. So first one, special mine lucky planets. Second one, special mine lucky planets. All right, and as you can see, they're launching off the Gazanti, and they're off to mine. So as you can see, our TIE fighters, they are mining, shooting their white mining lasers at the asteroids. And as they fill up with cargo, which they should do very quickly, they will go to the Gazanti and drop it off. So when you have a miner with a home base, so when you give them the mine command, they will become cyan on the property menu because they have a home base. So I'm going to go ahead and hide them all from the property menu because as you start to get lots of ships, they will become cluttered all over your menu. And to find them, you can just click on the Gozanti and hit O to bring up its owned ships and there's all the miners. So you can keep the Gozanti, you know, you can rename it to mining or whatever, set the, the name to something so it appears in your list so you know that's important. So I will update as the ships start filling up. So here we have a TIE fighter that's starting to fill up. 158 out of all the cargo capacity. Now I do have an upgrade. I don't know if you saw it there, but it did just dock and it just launched again. 
but I haven't upgraded that makes it so that fighters can just beam aboard, teleport aboard the docking bays on the Gazanti, and they don't have to actually line up and dock. So if we check the freight, the Gazanti has all of these valuable minerals, and all of those fighters, here comes another one, dropping it off, there's the TIE fighter down there, and it just launched. So the Gazanti has all the freight on it, so the TIE fighters will keep mining until the Gazanti is full. So you can easily just tell, once the Gazanti gets full, you can just um, have the Gazanti jump to a place that can uh, buy the minerals, jump it back, and keep mining. And I forgot to mention, that quad jumper is an M3 fighter. So this is a fighter class, despite the regular quad jumper being a freighter class. This can actually dock at the Gazanti too. So let's set the home base of the quad jumper to the Gazanti. And let's tell it to mine again, so we can reset the command. So now our quad jumper will dock at the Gozanti, and okay, there it went. It just docked, and it just unloaded, and it launched again. Now all its freight has been dropped off at the Gozanti. Now a common misconception: this Gozanti can dock four freighters, ex uh, fighters externally. That doesn't mean you can only have four uh, miners working for this Gozanti. As you can see, there's never more than like one TIE fighter docked at the Gazanti at any given time. So you could have like 30 or 40 miners all working for the Gazanti, and that would cause no problems. Now, of course, if you wanted to pack up and move somewhere else, which you wouldn't have to because this is a pretty safe sector, and you'll never, you'll, you'll pretty much never completely mine out a sector. And if you do, it's not a big deal. It won't ever happen pretty much with this size mining fleet. But you could have like 50 miners dock, uh, based at this Gazanti, and they could all be mining for it. So what you would do to sell your goods is you would check the Gazanti every now and then. You'll see when its freight fills up. You go up to it with your special transporter device. So if I go to Advanced Freight Exchange, I can do that because I have a transporter device on my ship. It also works if you have a transporter device on the Gazanti or VCX or whatever you're using as a mining home base ship. But as you can see here, this first column is the number of goods on the Gazanti. The second column is the number of goods on my ship. So we will transfer all of these to me, and then I can go and sell them. Take the silicon. I don't want to take his shields and guns. But now on my ship, this is my ship's freight bay, I have all of the goods, and I can go sell them. And some of them are quite valuable. Like this blue one is almost worth a, a million credits just for one mineral. Sorry, crystal. So that is the basic setup. Uh, you can have another Gazanti right next to it um, with more miners. You can have a bigger ship than this. So Gazanti is a nice starter ship, but it doesn't have the most freight in the world. You can upgrade to a TL class, like a neutron bulk crazy, like this guy. These ships have massive cargo bays. So if you get one of these as your mining home base, it will never, it won't fill up for a very, very long time. It will be mining. Um, and you can also dock freighters at it. So if you have mining freighters, uh, as opposed to the fighters I'm using right now, they'll actually be able to home base at this guy. And you can also just straight up dock with the ship and set up a courier to go ahead and unload all the minerals. So next I'm going to cover a station. So having a ship like the Gazanti works out fine in the early game, but you're soon going to want to upgrade. And I know I just said you can upgrade to a TL bulk cruiser, such as an MC-80 hauler, a Pelta, an uh, Acclimator, or even a Neutron Star, but the better option is a station, like this XQ-2 platform I have deployed here. This is a different save from that last one. And the station, the reason it's better is because um, they can dock a lot more ships, including freighters, than the boat cruisers. They also work nicer with dock agents because in order to automatically sell stuff, you have to use what are called dock agents and they can only be working out of a station. So if you have a ship home base, you're gonna have to route it to a station using a courier anyway. And the best reason of all is because these stations are cheaper than the big boat cruiser ships. So if we look at the what the Empire is selling right here. This XQ2 platform, which is the station I've just built, 23 million credits. An Acclimator Hauler, which is the TL big boat cruiser, is 36 million. And this is the same for all stations. Um, 
that can be used as a mining station. Now, not any station can be used as a mining station. If I got a plasteel plant, a factory, and tried to use that as a mining station, it wouldn't work because factories have a set list of wares that they can store. So the plasteel plant is only going to be able to store goods that it needs to produce that. The XQ2 platform, the Republic Trading Station, and these expensive equipment docks up here, these are docks, not factories. There's a difference. There's two types of stations. So you want a dock, a trading station, or an equipment dock. I highly recommend not using an equipment dock simply because they are almost 100 million. So a trading station works fine. The Republic Trading Station right here is probably the best bet because it can hold infinite fighters and five big ships. And remember, you can have way more fighters or ships working for the station than can currently dock at once, and it's the cheapest. Republic Trading Station, Free Rebel Trading Station, uh, XQ2 platform, those are all great options. So anyway, once you deploy your station, you're going to want to put it in your sector near the asteroid field. So if I put my station like down here in the bottom right, that'll work. The ships based at it will have to go mine and then they'll have to come back. And because mining ships are very slow, you want to physically deploy the station as close as possible to the asteroid field. So I can see there's this clump here of asteroids. I went ahead and moved the station when I deployed it over here. That way, the mining ships just have to make small little trips back between the station and the asteroid field to unload, while the dock agents that sell the stuff, they have to make the long trip, and that's fine. The less downtime for the miners, the better. You want them to be shooting those lasers at asteroids as often as possible for maximum profits. So anyway, I have 30 tie miners landed here. Let's go ahead and tell them to all mine. And by using the keyboard, you can do this a lot quicker. There's no bulk command to tell uh, ships to mine. But what I'm doing here is I'm, is I'm going to the landed ships. I'm hitting enter, C, two, three, enter. And that's not always going to be the same depending on what software is on your ship. Basically, you hit enter to bring up the menu, hit C to enter the command console. As you can see, special is 2, special might not always be 2. There's no combat here, so therefore, special is 2. And then minus 3, and I'm hitting enter again to pick the sector, freedom's reach, that I'm in. And they go mine. And then I move on to the next one. And as you can see in the background, the fighters are starting to disembark from the station, which has the added shield effects in the latest version. So let's continue. I only have to do this once because they will never, this command will never be interrupted. Even if they get shot at, they will keep mining until they explode. And because these TIE fighters are so cheap, there's not really a big deal if they do die. So anyway, now that the fleet is out mining, we can leave this sector and just let them mine, and in our property menu, ignore all of these other stations. Our XQ2 platform in Freedom's Reach, it doesn't have anything on board right now, but I will update as the ships start mining. So when it comes to using a station as a home base, the cargo capacity of the mining ships is kind of irrelevant now, because you don't have to worry about them filling up and making runs to go sell the goods they will always just drop it off at the station. So now that you have a station home base, the only thing you need to concern with is how many mining lasers total can I have mining at once uh, for the cheapest amount of, for the cheapest investment. So that's where these TIE fighters come in. Yes, their cargo bay is abysmal, but they each have four mining lasers. Let's stop flying here. And multiply that by however many miners you have, and we have 120 mining lasers active right now. The, each mining laser is what adds to the, the mining materials per minute or whatever metric you want to use. So having an expensive ship, like a big cruiser, I mean freighter, that only has four lasers, compared to a cheap TIE fighter that has four lasers, the TIE fighter is going to be much better because the station handles all the cargo. So the ships are coming into dock. These, let's see what the station has so far. So as the station starts filling up, 
Now we need to come up with a way to get away from these laser sound effects. We need to come up with a way to start selling all of these goods. So we could just make the trip ourselves, or even better, go to your ships, find a ship like a random TS you have, tell it to dock, and then tell it to go to a station and drop it off. Therefore, you're not having to make the trip yourself. But anyway, these need to be sold somehow. So I'm going to go over how to automatically sell these things using dock agents. Now remember, you can let NPCs come here and buy the goods, but that is very, uh, it's very not a reliable way to do it. And they're all, you're also gonna have to lower your prices so that you are competitive rather than selling it to the NPCs that are the highest buyers. So click on the station, go to D, the D menu, and turn off race traders. And I also, for me, I always set this to 25 on maximum jumps. That way my station agents and dock agents who have a jump supply of 50 can jump 25 sectors away. So I've got these freighters following me. I've got four lambdas, let's see, Sentinel. lambda sentinels and one YT-1300. We are going to make the Lambda Sentinels our dock agents. So let's tell them all to go dock at the platform. Let's see, broadcast all TS, dock at the platform. And they should all be going to dock. So these are going to be the dock agents. These are going to sell to the NPC economy. And only dock agents can sell to the NPC economy. Um, station agents can as well, but this isn't a factory, so we can't use a station agent. Remember, this is a dock, not a factory. So I'm going to set all of their home bases. So I'm just going to do that like this. Landed ships, home base at the XQ2 platform. Now they're all set. And for a dock agent, you're going to need basically this uh, cargo configuration. You don't need the combat, but... You're gonna need jump drive, quantum jump gate, trading system extension, the trading one and two will be built in, navigation and uh, station agent software. Those are what you need for a uh, dock agent. You also need to give them energy cells and you need to set their jump drive settings like this. And because I only set the station to a maximum jump of 25, I really only need to set their fuel resupply to 50. That way if the maximum make a maximum jump of 25 sectors away, they can get back. But I had them on 100 because I didn't realize I was gonna set it like that. So anyway, we need to go to our, first things first, we need to take care of fuel. So these mining ships, we're not in a location where they can just drift from sector to sector to go sell something. So say if they were selling to a, a mining outpost in Aladna Hill, they're not going to make it through all these pirates. Now, of course, this is a really dumb location I picked, but it doesn't really matter since the pirates don't come down here anyway. So basically, this mining platform needs a source of energy cells. So the first and easiest way to do that is to just set it up so that you purchase the cells. So the mining station is going to make money. You might as well set aside some of that money to purchase energy cells. So to get it started, let's go to the D menu. So click on it and hit D. We're going to give it some credits. Let's give it 1 million credits. Now, funny thing about these menus, I don't know if a lot of people know this, but if you type on the numpad, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, that's a million. And I hit left, that sets the step. So I'm setting it by a million. If you play Mayhem, this is something you really need to know. But rather than holding down left and letting it accelerate, you can just set however many you want. As you can see, after a while, it goes back to zero. If you set a step of like 500 or something, and you want to go back to one, just hit the backspace key, and it will set it back. That This applies to all of these menus. That includes in the Dockware Manager, when you're trading, whatever. So anyway, we gave our station a million credits. We're going to go to Advanced Command Console Direct Deposit. We'll set it up at one million. And the reason is because we want it to have at least 1 million credits to buy energy cells. That way it can keep the uh, fuel for the um, dock agents. And we, if we have our own um, station, we can set up a freighter to do that instead of a dock agent, and that will be a much better way. But we can easily just set it up to buy. So let's start with the energy cells. So this is the Dockware Manager menu. 
This is all the wares that it has in the cargo bay that are unassigned, and energy cells don't appear here. So to do that, let's find one of the landed ships. Let's just tell it to drop off one energy cell. So now that the XQ2 platform has a single energy cell in it, we will go to Dockware Manager. Now that it's here, we can click on it. So what we've done now, and this is really basic Dockware Manager stuff. This You can get quite complex with this uh, menu. But we just set it so that energy cells are set so that 10,000 energy cells is what the station is going to try and get. So basically, we want it to buy up to 10,000. 10,000 is a decent amount for um, resupply, and it's quite cheap. And of course, you can use that numpad trick here. So if I wanted to increase it by like 1,000, I could type 1,000 and then move left to right and set the capacity that way and backspace to reset it. And if you play Mayhem, you really need to know this. So all we have to do now is set the source. So this is the capacities page, 10,000 on energy cells. The rest are unassigned. We will go over to the sources tab, energy cells. Now it only pops up the things you have assigned. Now these are all my other stations throughout the, the map that are producing cells. So we could set it to one of those and a freighter will go pick it up, but we're gonna set it to buy instead. So therefore a buying dock agent will go and purchase them from the NPC economy. And they'll automatically do it from the best price and you don't have to worry about it. As long as you have a satellite somewhere in a sector that has a solar power plant, they will find it. And you should absolutely have at least one satellite in a sector that produces energy cells. So if we go to our Dockware Manager now, we can see energy cells, amount, I mean 10,000. Amount 1 is how many is currently in stock. Remember, we only transferred one. And freight source buy. The rest are unassigned. So let's set up our purchaser dock agent. There's two types of dock agents, buy and sell. Our YT1300 is going to be, so command trade dock agent buy. And as you can see, it renamed itself. If you see when it renames itself the word null, N-U-L-L, -L, in the name, then the command has failed. And it's most likely because you tried to do it by using the keyboard. I don't know why that happens, but if you use the mouse, uh, it should be fine, but you should see 001, it's the first buying dock agent. And if we look at our ships menu, this dock agent, sorting dock wares means it's on standby, and it should go buy some energy cells. So this ship, its only purpose is to just keep the energy cells topped off at 10,000. And because all the lambdas and this ship also have uh, resupply set to 100, they'll just grab the energy cells as they need it for fuel. So this ship is gonna take a while to do whatever it needs to do. Dock agents don't check quite often. All right, it's, it's out. So it undocked, it jumped. Let's see, where did it go? It's in Akil's beacon. Let's see, where is it? And it's going to this solar power plant. And as you can see, this one's selling it for the lowest possible price. So this dock agent will just keep this mining platform set at 10,000 uh, 10, energy cells, and that's all that it will do. And we can set that capacity higher. So this is another trick of dock agents. If there's ever a rare good, like like Tydroids or Keras, formerly known as Keras, that you want to buy, but you don't know where, you don't know who sells them. As long as you have one, you can just set it in the Dockware Manager and set this to buy. And therefore, your dock agents will automatically buy them for the best price and stock them up at your dock. Uh, therefore, you don't have to do any shopping yourself ever again. And because that dock agent is set to buy, he won't just buy energy cells. That one ship will go and buy everything on this list that is set to buy. Now, we're not going to assign these things because these are going to be sold by default. Dock agent set to sell, which is the second type of dock agent, will sell anything on the unassigned list, and they'll also sell anything that's over capacity. So if we had a million energy cells and our capacity is 10,000, they'll sell the surplus. So in our mining platform, we have these Lambda Sentinels. We are going to go to trade, dock agent, and sell on all of them. And it's good to have about four Dock agent set to sell, maybe five, because dock agents only sell one thing at a time. And as you can see, we have many different little things at a um, on the dock, and four is just a good number. 
therefore everything ends up getting sold and you'll have one thing just stockpiling it endlessly. So if we go back to our station, we should see the lambdas starting to undock eventually. So they're all on standby, sorting dockwares. The scripts don't activate immediately. If they did, it would cause a major performance hit to the game. Let's wait for them to undock. Now, this is the, the setup with jump drives. Notice I didn't even have to find a Plutarch mining base or somewhere a buyer. I didn't even have to find a buyer. I just have satellites in a bunch of sectors already. And those sectors, one of them has to have a place that buys it. The dock agents will find a buyer. So I don't have to go find, let's say, a, let's see, ore belt. Oh, come on, where is one? So in Rolk's Legacy, Plutarch Mining Outpost, I don't even have to know that that's there. If this one is offering the best prices, the dock agents will go to this one and sell the stuff there. And they'll have access to the entire map that you have satellites in. So you don't even have to worry about finding a buyer. So that's why I set up this mining station in Freedom's Reach, which is a completely far-flung sector that is actually quite safe. The pirates don't wander down here. And any other enemies won't get past the pirates, so this is a pretty much untouchable sector. And I'm using the jump drive, so I don't have to worry about anything. Another thing is if the mining base is far off the map, like you put the station here, you're going to want to eject the jump beacon next to it so your ships can don't have to fly all the way from the gate. It looks like this is our YT-1300. Let's check his freight. Full of energy cells. It, it already purchased its first energy cells. And if we look at our mining platform, it's, it used to have a million credits. It's now at 929, uh, 929,000. That's the money that was spent on the energy cells. And as the other dock agents, so I missed it, but these dock agents right here, two, three, four, and five, they are the lambdas. They are all over the galaxy, Red Light, Nathan's Voids, Duke's Domain, 18 billion, selling the various wares. As they sell them, they the money will go to the station's account. And because we set up direct deposit, it will replenish the energy cell money up to a million, and any surplus will go directly into my account. And that's the basic setup. You can, uh, there's no limit to how many TIE Fighters you can put on this thing. You can put, you know, 300, 300 TIE Fighter Miners on this station. And that won't, well, it will cause problems lag-wise in the sector. They will cause all kinds of lag problems, but you don't ever have to enter this sector. There's never a reason for the player to ever come to this station. You can just let it generate cash. And you can always check in on it. So in the, min the mining platform, in this click menu, if you go to Advanced Trade Report, you will see everything that it's ever bought and sold. And that includes things sold by its agents. So. Energy cells, right, we spent 70,000 credits on energy cells automatically. That's the guy who went out and bought them at Aquila's Beacon. One of our ships has already sold ore, one of the Lambdas. Looks like one just sold silicon. I think there were some other ones selling things as well. They should reach their destination soon. One of them just sold 38 red minerals. And you can see the gross profits starting to come in. And, you know, you can just let this run. It will just generate unlimited cash. And you can set up more of these mining bases and other sectors. You can expand this one. There's really no limit to how many mining ships you have in this game. And that's why Loki's Cube's Universe is pretty much a cookie clicker type of game when it comes to making money. You just use all the mining uh, and abuse it like this. So this is my preferred setup. A station with a bunch of mining fighters and a handful of dock agents taking care of fuel and selling all of the goods and direct deposit and all of that. A lot of other people like to use TLs, you know, the acclimator as your mining home base for the TIE Fighters. The reason I don't like that is because the dock agents can't be based at a ship. They only work when they're based at a station. So you're going to have to have a station anyway with dock agents that um, sell all the goods. And you're going to have to set up a courier, which is basically hard coding a ship to go and pick up all of the mining goods from your acclimator base, take it to the station, and then the dock agents will sell it from there. So why would you want to have, you know, pay for an extra acclimator, which is, you know, 40 million, and have a have to set up the courier and worry about the courier getting potentially destroyed or something, 
all for the ability of mobility uh, when that's not even needed. You just set up a station and the station is dirt cheap, you know, 9 million for the Republic Trading Station. And you can just set up as many of these all over the map as you want uh, with more dock agents. And you don't even have to set up more dock agents. Uh, you can have your dock agents at one station. When you set up your second mining base, you can just have a freighter bringing it to the first mining base, and therefore the first mining base will have twice the wares for its dock agents to sell. And because they only sell one thing at a time, the, uh, they won't get overwhelmed with that. And you can always just add more dock agents. Remember, there's no limit to how many mining fighters, mining transports, dock agents, you know, whatever you have for this one station even if you exceed the number that the station can actually dock on paper because none of these TIE fighters are docked right now. At any given time, we only have like one fighter docked and they just slowly trickle in over time. You can see the conga line uh, hooking up and even if you're using like a carrier as a home base, not even a, a freighter, if you're using like a, like a home one or a star destroyer as a mining base, you can have way more than that ship uh, can carry so you can have you know a thousand mining fighters working for a star destroyer and it would work just fine but just know the station is the best way to do it and the last thing is and I didn't mention this because it should go without saying that this is a terrible idea you can just fly the mining ship yourself so here I am in a mining TIE fighter you know you can shoot the lasers just like you do any other lasers they aren't special uh, but whenever you hit a rock they will just fill your cargo up with uh, minerals and you can fast forward time and hold down the right click to shoot with CETA on and see I'm getting silicon but you can just tell a ship to do this so there's never a reason why you would ever want to do this since this is extremely boring so I should go without saying but never fly a mining ship and the mining lasers do next to no damage so don't even bother using them in combat and that should do it for mining don't take this as a full explanation of the Dockware Manager. There are a lot more things you can do with it. Um, I barely scratched the surface of what you need to set up a proper shipbuilding Dockware Manager. If we check here at my headquarters, um, there's a lot of you know things you can do with this. Let's see. Where's another one? Here's a crazy Dockware Manager menu I have with all the Saturn Complex hubs and freighters and dock agents and thresholds and all of that sort of things. I will make a proper tutorial on that soon, but uh, the energy cell thing is basically all you need to get started with this, and you never really have to worry about it. You will never run out of money because the energy cells will never cost more than the ore you're, you're selling. 